So example four, we have two chemical plants, one at Macon and the other in Jonesboro produce three types of fertilizer, low phosphorus, medium phosphorus, and high phosphorus. At each plant, the fertilizer is produced in a single production run. So the three types are produced in fixed proportions. Remember first everyone, we are looking for totals. I don't think I've seen anything like that yet. The Macon plant produces one ton of LP, two tons of MP, and three tons of HP in a single operation. So that means every time that the Macron plant runs, it produces that much of each of those fertilizers. Whereas one operation of the Jonesboro plant produces one ton of LP, five tons of MP, and one ton of HP. Again, every time the Jonesboro plant runs, it produces that much of each of those three types of fertilizer. The total fertilizer needed, aha, is at least 100 tons of LP, 260 tons of MP, and 180 tons of HP. That sounds like, those, sounds like, those sound like totals to me. So I've got example three rolling here. I'm sorry, example four. And what we have is we need 100 tons of low phosphorus. So I'll put my total and I will label it. Uh, we need 260 tons of medium phosphorus. And we need 180 tons of high phosphorus. So uh, we are asked to write the system, find the corners, all of that stuff. So now that I have my totals, I need to go back in and fill in the guts. So let's read again. We'll go back to where we started seeing numbers. The Macon plant produces one ton of LP, two tons of MP, and three tons of HP. So it sounds like my vertical column is here is going to be Macon. We're going to make Acon our, Macon our X value. And it's one ton of LP, two tons of MP, and three tons of HP. Again, those are all Xs because they are all connected to Macon. Next, everyone, we know that Jonesboro produces, let's see, where did I get lost in this? these huge problems sometimes? One ton of LP, five tons of MP. I don't remember what this is why now because we've changed over. And one ton of high phosphorus. So again, going through my process, everyone, we find the totals. Oops. We match them with their labels. Then we fill in the columns based on the additional information in the problem. And so this is just the way that I like to go about it. It seems to work well for most people. If you have a different way that works well for you, that's okay. Let's go ahead and finish filling this in. <clears throat> So I do have some of the fertilizer plus some of the fertilizer is equal to all the fertilizer in this. And what does it say we need at least? So in this instance, everyone, we are going to be greater than or equal to. We need to produce at least 100 tons of LP, at least 100, 100, 260 tons of MP, and at least 180 tons of high phosphorus. So... Uh, we have our three inequalities. Next step for us is going to be to go to um, GeoGebra. You can see I've got my previous video here. I've been making a bunch of videos today. So what we're going to do, everyone, is click the three dots. If you want to save a picture of this one, you could say export the image. I don't need to, so I'm going to say new. Don't save, and I get my new grid here. And again, to move, I've got to click the arrow. So I'll pull it down there. I'm going to go ahead and read my things off my iPad, everyone. I have 1x plus 1y is greater than or equal to 100. I have 2x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 260. And I have 3x plus 1y is greater than or equal to 180. You can see I can't see my graph at all, which means I need to zoom out until I can. There we go. And I'm going to keep going until I see what could be all the corners. 
And so it looks like, again, we're looking for the corners where we they abut the darkest region. So I have one of those corners here, one here, one here, and one here. So there are going to be four options of how I operate these two plants to produce the fertilizer. And the thing is only one of these uh, options is going to keep my costs as low as possible. And we've talked about minimizing costs before. Again, the only way to truly minimize cost is to do nothing. But as we will see here uh, in the example for continued when we're done with this one, there's gonna be options that will allow us to get the job done, produce the fertilizer that's needed, but do so at a much cheaper cost than if we had just done something random. So to complete this, everyone, we do need to duplicate these and put the equal sign in there so that they make lines. And you could again, type these in by hand if that's something that you wanted to do. I'm just choosing to duplicate it because it's faster. And as I mentioned before, everyone, you're gonna see that GeoGebra is changing these to look a little bit different. It's going to show my input and then what it made it instead. Again, GeoGebra is just simplifying these or in, in the case of these ones, removing the one, the coefficient of one in front, which is not something we need to worry about. Just stay the course, keep go, do your thing. We also need two lines, X equals zero and Y equals zero to cover our Y axis and our X axis. And so now we've got our original inequalities our three equations so that GeoGebra will consider those as being lines, and then our line over our x-axis and our y-axis. So I can come up here to the point of intersection. I'm only interested in the points that abut the darkest region. So these points right here are the ones that I'm concerned with. I'll take a moment to write those down Again, uh, as we have with some of the with one of the previous problems, I think the one with the farm and the corn and the soybeans, we do have four options. So I will record option A, option B, option C, and option D. So option A is going to be zero and 180, meaning that we would not run the Macron plant at all. The X value is zero. That means it gets run for zero hours and we would run the Jonesboro plant for 180 hours. Our next option is 40, 60. So the Macron plant would get run for 40 hours. The Jonesboro plant would get run for 60. Our next is 80, 20. So 80 hours at Macron, 20 hours at Jonesboro. And then our last is 130, zero. So 130 hours at Macron and zero hours at Jonesboro. So again, you may be thinking to yourself, gee, why wouldn't I just split it down the middle like B and do 40, 60? Well, that might not be the most cost efficient way of doing it. And that's why we do math. And that's why people that are able to do problems like this make huge amounts of money because there's lots of people that don't know how to do stuff like this and we make a lot of money for them. So it's really, 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 really good to know how to do problems like this. With that, everyone, we will be back with example for continued and have an answer for this company in the next video.